In the previous video, we looked at some artworks and considered how we should not be afraid of looking at artwork and analysing it, not be afraid to go into a gallery, not think there's some high art code that we cannot penetrate. So here we're going to start with imagery that is probably quite familiar to you. It's imagery by the artist Eric Carl, and it's illustrative because it's in the book we all know very well, The Hungry Caterpillar. Now let's look at the image on the cover of this book. So what is it? It's a caterpillar. It doesn't have a background, it's just a caterpillar. Um, and what sort of style is this caterpillar? It, it's not completely realistic. The caterpillars come in lots of different shapes and sizes and forms. It's a bit bumpy. It's not as ordered as a normal caterpillar. I've never seen one with a red head and a green body. I'm not saying there isn't one. You can probably find one, um, especially on the internet. It's got some text on the on the image too. It's got these like antennae coming off it. It's got some little legs along the bottom of it. And let's think about the process. So if we look at the surface on it, it reminds me a little bit of the work of Peter Lanyon from my previous video, where it's kind of layered. And you can imagine you put paint down and rub it back and layer things and try things on in there. And then you've got these different surfaces and then they've been cut out, chop, 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 with some scissors and arranged into a caterpillar style arrangement. Now, lots of artists in history, including Picasso and Matisse, um, currently the artist William Kentridge. I'm going to show you a piece of work by him. I have one to hand with a horse. He uses this collage process of taking bits and arranging them. And here we have the same thing going on with our caterpillar. So the artist has arranged them and then put these little lines into it. They look like they've been drawn with a pencil crayon. They look slightly grainy rather than smooth. That's why I think it's pencil crayon over felt tip. And finally, the last thing we're going to consider is our response to it. Do we like it? I like it because it's so familiar to me. I don't like it in the same way that I am drawn into some paintings. I'm attracted to some paintings. I think, wow. But it's got a familiarity from my childhood, even though I'm in my 40s, and I've reread it to my children in more recent years. And so I do like it. I like it quite a lot. So I'm going back to consider Holman Hunt's um, painting, a Victorian painting, The Hireling Shepherd from 1851. And this is a painting from Manchester Art Gallery. And so just like with The Hungry Caterpillar, I'm going to consider what's in this painting. So we know there are two figures in the foreground, the shepherd and the lady. Um, he's holding this moth. There's an English countryside in the background. We have the sheep that are straying across into the field beyond. We also know there's symbolism within this work. We know a little bit about pre-Raphaelites now and about their interest in nature and symbolism and stories. So we know a bit more. We could do some more research and find out more about it. Um, how is it arranged? It's arranged in a very conventional way. It's just a, an arrangement that looks like a field and like a quite a legitimate, realistic scene. Now, when I showed you the work of Terry Frost in the previous video, I was suggesting this might be a harbour with boats in it. Part of it might be in plan view and part of it might be in an elevation view. But in this one, there is no part of it might be this and part of it might be something else. It is very clearly arranged in quite a conventional style. And how is it made? It's made as an oil painting. So the artist has painted it and they probably made sketches up front and did drawings. The uh, figure in here, this lady is in many paintings by the pre-Raphaelite. She was considered to be a pre-Raphaelite beauty. And we see her work, we see her image in several of their work. And response wise, when you're wandering around a gallery, you might not pay a lot of attention to it, but when you spend some time looking at it, my response is that I really enjoy it. I really like this painting and it's very familiar to me. When I see other work by this artist, I'm drawn to it, but there are other artists in this group, Ford Maddox Brown, for example, whose work I really am drawn to and I'm sucked in straight away, more so maybe than Holman Hunt, even though I'm showing you his imagery. So I'm gonna propose a little formula uh, to break down a piece of artwork if you're struggling. So the content. What is it? What is in that picture? If we look at our hireling shepherd, it was people within a field, a shepherd, a lady potentially distracting him, um, possibly courting, 
the sheep in the field in a traditionally British landscape. So that's the content. And if we consider our very hungry caterpillar, the content on the cover of this book is the caterpillar, solely the caterpillar on a white background with some text to say it's the very hungry caterpillar. And then if we consider the form, it's arrangement. We can see very clearly the traditional arrangement. It's a, it's a conventional piece of work. And if we look at our caterpillar, we can see it's a conventional illustration. It's on the cover of a book and both arranged in quite an ordered, systematic way. The process, we consider the painting. It is traditional in terms of its materials and its style and it's oil painted. Let's go and look at our Terry Frost and we are going to consider this against our content. Well, it's abstract, but I'm suggesting it's potentially boats in a harbour, potentially. Um, it's arranged. I'm saying that this is almost like in plan view looking down and this is in elevation view from the side and we're looking at these boats from the side rather than looking in the same plan view. So it's a kind of unusual interpretation and yet it's process, it's kind of got paint layered on it and it's quite a different application of paint to this. And we can see a similar application of paint in our hungry caterpillar with layering going on. So our processes differ in all three painted contexts now. Our response to it, sometimes they call this the mood, the mood of the painting, but I like to think of it more as a reaction. Like, I like this. I like the story of it, um, I like the technique of it, I like the familiarity, remember, of our hungry caterpillar. And yet, I response to this, quite like it, it's quite, kind of quite like it, I like it around me, but I'm not drawn into it in quite the same way as maybe the Highland Shepherd, and it isn't as familiar as the hungry caterpillar. And connections. Now this is my add-on in all of this because in anything that I'm looking at in terms of art I'm thinking about how it connects to other things in life um, and things I might do or go on to do to develop work from it. So I'm as an artist interested in what we can take away. So in this painting I'm probably not going to do a very traditional landscape painting. I could do an interpretation Remember from our previous video, we have Velasquez. I'm going to zoom the camera out a little bit. So we have Velasquez's Las Meninas and we have Picasso's interpretation. Now I quite fancy doing that with this painting, interpreting it in a new format, in a new style. I like the ideas within this painting, this suggestion that the flock are being unattended and they're straying into these pastures and coming to ill harm and I like the kind of connection and parallel between that and religious messages. Um, I like the symbolism, I like the, the, the death head moth. I've already connected that to Silence of the Lambs and the poster. I might look at the moths. I've been to Manchester Art Gallery, um, Manchester Museum recently and seen a lovely display of moths in there and how with climate change and sooty conditions the peppering display on the the color pigmentation on the back of the moths differs i quite like that that evolution of change um so there's lots of things i've connected here i'm now going to connect to this one by terry frost now i live in manchester i don't live near the coast but i do love going to the coast and i love harbors especially and i love little boats and i remember seeing boats in lots of different contexts i like the northeast fishing boats and I might develop something based on this. I've been looking at the work of Robert Tavener with a year 10 pupil recently and his fishing work and I'm connected to that work currently and I think I might go back and look at that and I could develop some work so those are connections there. Now the Hungry Caterpillar, I could connect to so many things. I could connect to childhood memories. I could connect to the story. I could draw parallels with lockdown. Here we go. We've all been stuck at home. We've all been stuck at home, night and day, night and day. And we have eaten our way through the whole house. I've eaten more than just fruit, believe me, guys. 
I've eaten more than these things. It's just past Christmas. I've eaten through my chocolates, my crisps, my bag of nuts. So I've eaten through everything. I do feel like I need to go and have a lie down. And I would like to wake up when COVID has gone on the other side and emerge into a bright new world. So you see how I've made a connection to my current experiences and the story of the hungry caterpillar. So I might create a story based upon the principle of the hungry caterpillar. I might use a different process. I might use a graphic drawing process, but here you can see how we connect. So when considering artwork, you can use a quite simple formula to break it down. Consider what it's about, how it's been arranged, the processes that have been used, your response to it. If you like it, if you don't like it equally, why don't you like it? Does it remind you of something you don't particularly like? And what connections there are to the world around you?